Come on! Put off the red nose reindeer Had a very shiny nose uh, And if you ever saw him You would even say it close Come on! Come on! After DMX dropped hit tracks throughout the 90s and beyond Like Get At Me Dog, Rough Riders Anthem, No Sunshine and Party Up Up in here Woo! Y'all gon' make me lose my mind Up in here, up in here Just to be honest, I really really hate that whistle And up in here Ruins the song. Yeah. After topping the Billboard 200 charts with five albums selling 74 million copies worldwide and appearing in films like Belly, Romeo Must Die, Exit Wombs, Cradle to the Grave, and Last Hour, bringing his net worth to an estimated $10 million. So yeah. you said that you've written seven songs in one day? Yeah, I've written and recorded seven songs in one day. That's a crazy work ethic. Yeah. After fathering 15 children, feuding with Ja Rule, and collaborating with the likes of Jay Z, LL Cool J, Method Man, Little Kim, Jada Kiss, Snoop Dogg, Busta Rhymes, Ludacris, and Eminem. Since catapulting into the spotlight with his debut album, It's Dark and Hell is Hot, in 1998, DMX has led such a ridiculous life that it's hard to decide where to start. He's had serious financial problems, including bankruptcy, a mind boggling 15 children, countless arrests, and no shortage of bizarre stunts, including his 2014 agreement to box George Zimmerman. I'm going to talk about all this stuff in this video, but before we focus too much on the negative, let's not forget some of the amazing things he's done. Like in 2011, he helped a guy mop floors in a Waffle House in Greensville, South Carolina. In 2012, he generously donated the first week's sales of his album, Undisputed, to the families of victims of 9-11. And in 2015, he randomly boarded a bus bound for a wedding to rap along to his own track. No joke. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of DMX after his initial rise to fame, here for you on After They're Famous. Now we've done bios on a ton of other rappers on this channel, but let me know in the comments down below, who's next? And I got a feeling, it's going to be Ja Rule. Or when I'm with my children. I miss my children. Yeah, I miss my children. DMX was born Earl Simmons on December 18, 1970, in Mount Vernon, New York. He was raised there and in Yonkers, New York, the child of Arnett Simmons and Joe Barker. He was raised a Jehovah Witness and remains a religious Christian to this day. He was the victim of abuse, lived in a group home, and turned to robbery to survive, which led to frequent run ins with the law. Trouble started earlier for you, didn't it? Well, what do you mean by trouble? It's going to be a long interview, Dan. He started out in the hip hop as a DJ and human beatbox, but later began to MC, making a name for himself in freestyle rap battles. Eventually, he got the attention of P. Diddy and auditioned for him, but apparently Puff wasn't interested. I spit, but whatever, and he was like, ah. Um, his voice is too rough, he's not marketable. DMX then signed with Def Jam and released It's Dark and Hell is Hot in 1998. The album debuted at number one on Billboard and featured one of DMX's most iconic songs. Like of all time, the Rough Riders anthem. Stop, drop, shut him down. DMX would drop his next album, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, just six months later. It too would debut at number one and was certified triple platinum. A prolific artist, there was no stopping DMX from pumping out hits, but there was no stopping his criminal charges either. In 1998, he was arrested for the rape of a 29 year old stripper in the Bronx, but DNA tests done on the woman came back negative for a match, which cleared his name. That stripper just wanted some money. In 1999, DMX was arrested on weapons possession charges in Fort Lee. Later that year, he faced an animal cruelty charge in New Jersey, which was dropped after he agreed to plead guilty and record PSAs for an animal welfare group. Have you ever I got been a dog tattooed on my back? I love dogs. You don't associate yourself with any dog fighting enterprise? No, not at all. Not okay. At all. But that year, he also released another number one album, and then there was X, which featured songs like What's My Name, What the Bitches Want, and Party Up. Your old man say you stupid, you be like, so, I love my baby mother, I never let her go. 1999 also marked two important beginnings in DMX's personal life, the beginning of his marriage to Tashira Simone's, and the beginning of his beef with Ja Rule which would last almost as long. The beef started after DMX and Jay-Z were featured on Ja Rule's song, It's Murder, off his debut album, Veni Veni Vici. DMX was irritated to find the up and coming rapper's gruff vocals sounded a lot like his own, you know, signature style. 
and the feud would last for the next 10 years. DMX's 11 year marriage to Shahira Simone's was a rocky one. Although the couple had four children together, DMX cheated on her repeatedly, fathering a total of 10 children with other women by the end of their marriage. Let's get it on! And it's a lot. Yeah. And DMX would run into a lot of financial trouble over these kids. In 2004, Monique Wayne became the mother of DMX's baby, and three years later, he was ordered to pay her $1.5 million. By 2013, DMX had so much child support owed to his various baby mamas that he filed for bankruptcy. The man says he only has $50 cash in his pocket and no money in the bank. That's some serious baby mama drama. For real, 10 of them. Keep in mind, while DMX was facing these serious financial problems, he was still bringing in massive amounts of money. By 2013, he had released seven studio albums, five of which were number one on Billboard, and he had successfully broken into Hollywood, starring in big budget films including Romeo Must Die and Exit Wounds, for which he also produced the soundtrack. Who turn out the lights is what niggas be saying. Now you don't wanna fight, but y'all niggas be playing. DMX's ongoing legal issues were yet another strain on his marriage. He rung in the new millennium with a 15 day sentence for possession of cannabis. The next year, he was arrested again on the same charge and for driving without a license. He was in and out of both jail and rehab over the next decade as he racked up several other charges, including animal cruelty, disorderly conduct, possession of drug, paraphernalia, assault on a prison guard, drug possession, criminal possession of a weapon, criminal impersonation, criminal mischief, menacing, driving under the influence, reckless driving, driving with a suspended license, attempted carjacking, theft, and violation of probation. And that isn't all of them. Yeah. In July of 2010, DMX filmed the television pilot about his road to recovery as he was released from prison for drug use and violating probation. But the show never evolved into a series, probably because DMX was not really recovering. After all, he was arrested just three weeks after the pilot was shot. Yeah, and continued to get in trouble with the law, mainly on driving related charges. Three weeks after. You know what I mean? Like, come on. It's not really been that journey, it's the journey as a whole and that's just one of the things that's happening, happened along that journey. That year DMX and Tashir they separated although the divorce would drag on for years, not finalized until 2014. DMX would then move on to long term relationship with Desiree Lindstrom. Around this time DMX made headlines yet again when his fans were promised a celebrity boxing match between himself and George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman is of course the infamous Florida resident who shot and killed an unarmed teenager Trayvon Martin in 2012 and was controversially acquitted of the murder charges. We'll gladly beat the out of him. Well, DMX promised to beat his ass. Sorry. A lot of people worried that this fight would only work to promote the killer as a cultural hero. See, yeah, that's some clown shit. That's some clown shit. That's clown shit. A petition was launched on change.org demanding that the event be cancelled. Fortunately, the match never ended up taking place. Since then, DMX has continued to work on his upcoming 8 studio album, which has been in the works since 2013. The album will feature producers Swizz Beats and Dame Grease, and rappers including Kanye West and Dr. Dre. He also continues to have run-ins with the law. In 2015, he was arrested for robbery and outstanding child support. He was sentenced to six months in jail. And another arrest warrant was issued after he missed a court hearing over child support he owes to his ex-wife, Tashira. Of course. Now she's a baby mama, not, not just a mama. But his child support issues would not turn DMX off from having kids. On August 16, 2016, he and his girlfriend, Desiree, well, they welcomed his 15th child into the world. Exodus Simones. This guy does not take a hint. How can you parent ki 15 kids in four seconds? Skype? <laughs> As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is After They're Famous. My name is Michael McCredden, and thanks for watching this video. We do all sorts of celebrity bios, and uh, these After They're Famous are kind of some of my faves. I think they're very interesting. We did one recently on Kanye West and Iggy Azalea, and I think we're going to cook one up on Joe Rule. But who do you guys want to hear about next? Let us know in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. What? Uh, what? 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 Fuck. <laughs>